Yes, good morning and welcome to Master Talker Online Class. Today, I'll be teaching you a topic that called number system. Number system. Or systems of number. Number system. Or systems of numbers. Now, the first number system we know, that you need to know are the natural numbers. Natural numbers. Okay. Now, what's a natural number? Natural numbers are just the set of positive whole numbers. The set of positive whole numbers. Now, how do you remember this? When you are in secondary school, when you are in primary school or nursery school, okay, if they ask you to recite the numbers, you always start from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So you, you never started from 0 or even negative. So you are still in your natural state. So the first number system they teach you, is what the natural numbers so we represent the natural numbers as n so like this n is equal to the set of one two three blah 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 till infinity okay please zero is not a natural number because zero is neither positive nor negative okay so natural numbers are only positive whole numbers so number two <coughs> number two are the integers integers we represent the integers at z now, integers are simply the whole, all the whole numbers you know, whether negative or zero or positive. So we define integers as what? As what? Integers are the set of negative whole numbers, zero, and positive whole numbers. You see, I'm demonstrating with my left and right hand. Negative whole numbers from the left, zero in the middle, then positive whole numbers at the right. So now, so we have that what? Uh, integers okay are the set of minus uh, dot 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 minus three minus two minus one zero one two three dot 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 okay so negative whole numbers in the left zero and positive whole numbers so now if you look at this you will discover that every natural number is equally an integer but not every integer is a natural number so you need to take note of that every natural number is an integer but not every integer is a natural number. This simply means that every natural number or the set of natural numbers are what? Subset of integers, okay? A subset of what? Integers. Or you say that integers, the big man, is what? A superset of natural numbers. When we talk about set, I'll tell you what a subset and superset means. Subset means a set that is gotten from another set. For example, um, if, okay, for example... I am a mathematician, I studied mathematics, and mathematics department is a subset of physical science faculty, okay? Physical science is the big man, a faculty, but uh, mathematics is a subset, another set that is gotten from uh, uh, the uh, physical science faculty. So number three, number three we are going to talk about are the rational numbers, rational numbers. Rational numbers are simply, we represent it with um, Q, okay? Rational numbers are simply fractions, okay? Fractions where the denominator is not zero, okay? Or rather, fractions of integers where the denominator is not zero, okay? So what does it mean that if you bring out any number from integers here and put them in a fraction form, okay? Then you are talking about what? Um, a rational number. So we define rational number. Rational numbers are the set of m over n such that that m and n are elements of integers and that n the denominator must not be zero you see what am i saying that if i bring any two elements from this integer and put them in fraction it means that i've gotten a rational number now with this definition you can see that every integer is a rational number why because every whole number if i started putting over one over one I see that they are now in fraction form. So every integer is a, is a rational number. But not every rational number is an integer. Because if I say 1 over 2, 1 over 2 is not an integer. But 1 over 2 is a rational number. So don't forget that the denominator cannot be 0. Why? If the denominator is 0, it is undefined. It is undefined. That is why we say that the denominator cannot be 0. Now the next one I'm going to teach you is just the opposite of this one. It's not part of our... Uh, number system but i just want to teach you that the irrational numbers we have the rational and the irrational numbers now irrational numbers are just a uh, set of numbers 
okay, set of um, decimal numbers that that are not reoccurring, okay, and don't have a, they don't have a, a, a particular pattern and they don't have end. They keep going, they keep going. So let me give you an example to that. Let me give you an example to that. Uh, if you press root two, root two is a is an irrational number. Let me press root two. Okay. Uh, Rotate. Okay. Let me press root two. Uh, root two. Okay. Root two gave me one point four one four two one three five six. It continues that way till, and it doesn't have a particular pattern. See, one four one four two. You think you get four three? You're not getting one three five. Blah blah blah. Mixture of numbers, and it doesn't end. So that is an uh, uh, an irrational number. So another one is root three, root five, root six. All sorts are irrational numbers. Then pi, etc. Okay. So that is that. Now number four, number four are the real numbers. The real numbers. Now represented with r. Okay. Now real numbers are simply um, numbers found on a number line. Look at that. The set of numbers found. On a number line. So I'm having this. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, dot, dot, dot. Now, the difference between this one and this one is that we know the next number after any number we can mention. Like if I mention 1, we know that after 1 is 2, after 2 is 3, after minus 1 uh, is 0. Okay, after minus 3 is minus 2. So like that. But in this case, we don't know any, in fact, nobody knows any number next to any number you can mention. For example, if you mention 0, nobody knows the next number after 0, including myself. Because if I say that the next number after 0 is 0 0.1, another person will say, what about 0 0.001? Another person will say, what about 0 0.0000001? So you see, between two, any two numbers, from the real numbers are uncountable numbers. So real numbers are simply every number you know in this life is a real number. So what do I mean by that? Okay, between any two numbers here are uncountable numbers. So that is the difference between this one and this one, okay? So now, another way to define real number, real numbers are simply the union of rational and irrational numbers. Represent it with this or this, please. Complement. They are the same thing. Prime and complement in sets are the same thing. So, real numbers are just the union of the rational and the irrational numbers. So, please, you need to take note of that. Okay. So, number five, we have just five systems of numbers. Please, don't forget. Don't forget that um, I told you that this man is here. So, you are going to get that um, every integer is a subset of what? Uh, rational numbers. Or you say that rational numbers... A subset of what the integer. The same is applicable here. That every um, what am I saying? Every rational number is a subset of what is a subset of uh, real numbers. Or you can say that what real numbers are what subset of integers. Um, subset of uh, a superset. Sorry, superset. The other way, superset of. Um, if you're writing the big man first, if you're writing the big man first, you use superset, please. Okay. Now, since this man is a subset of this man, you know that I can say that uh, natural numbers are equally a subset of what? Integers, which is equally a subset of uh, rational numbers, which is equally a subset of what? A real number. Yes. Let me explain what I mean by this. I mean that every natural number is equally um, a real number, but not every real number is a natural number. What do I mean by that? Now, I told you that, um, okay, maybe I'm a 100 level now, 100 level maths department, okay? Do you know that 100 level maths department is a subset of mathematics department itself? Yes. And that mathematics department itself is a subset of the faculty of physical science? Yes. Then physical science is a subset of the university itself, is it not? Subset, I mean, it's gotten from. First year mathematics is gotten from the mathematics department. 
Mathematics department is gotten from the physical science faculty. Physical science faculty is gotten from the university at large. Do you know that? That year one mathematics is equally gotten from the university, the main man. Yes, it's as simple as that. Or you can say that that year one is, is equally gotten from uh, physical science. Exactly, correct. So that is how these things are. So the last number system I'm going to teach you is the complex number. The complex number. Uh, number five, the complex number. Okay, we'll present it, we we'll see like this. Now, uh, in complex number, what brought about complex number is when we are having a meeting uh, in 1901, I was there, okay? In 1901, when we are having a meeting at mathematicians, we decided to solve an equation. Somebody gave us an equation that said S squared uh, minus one is zero, that we should find X. Okay, I quickly solved it. I said S squared is equal to one, then X is equal to the square root of one plus or minus. Okay, so and I got that S is equal to what? Plus or minus one because the square root of one is one. Okay, uh, another person has said, let us change the sign. Said S squared plus one is equal to zero. So I'm having S squared, I rushed it, is equal to minus one, and S is equal to the square root of minus one plus or minus. I got to this place, I was stopped. And I get the same thing with my colleagues. They say, now, the problem is, what is now the square root of minus one? We were thinking about it, we were thinking about it, trying to get it. We couldn't get it at the real world. We now say, now, let's take it to the imaginary world. Let's imagine it to be anything, since we cannot get it at the real world. And we now say, oh, since the first letter of imagination is I, we now say, let's take it that the square root of minus one is I. That is how we got that the square root of minus one is I. Okay? So, anytime you see the square root of minus... It is i. So, which means if I'm asked to find the square root of minus 4, okay, square root of 4 normally is 2, but the square root of minus is i. So, my answer becomes plus or minus i, okay? So, that is that. So, that is what brought about a uh, complex number. So, complex number, so how do you define complex number? A complex number is a set of numbers that has both the real part and the imaginary part, okay? It has both the real part. And the imaginary part. So mathematically, if you want to define it, you define complex number as a set of a plus b i, such that that a and b are elements of real numbers, comma b is not equal to zero and i is equal to the square root of minus one. This is how we define a complex number. Now we call that a that does not have i the real part. This one is the one we call the real part. Why the bi? We call it the imaginary part. <clears throat> okay, so don't forget that what every real number is a complex number, but not every complex number is a real number. So, complex number, the bigger man, is a superset of real numbers. So, in summary, look at the way we summarize it. We summarize that the first and the small one is the natural number. And covering it is the integers. Covering it is the what? The rational numbers. Covering it is the real numbers. And the other part of them all is what? The complex number. So which means every natural number is equal to a complex number. Every integer is equal to a complex number. So this is how you memorize it. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you in our next video. This one will now lead us to sets. We'll talk about sets, set of numbers. God bless you. Please share, like, and subscribe. Bye-bye.